earlier. What is the most courageous thing that you've had to do? So when I was, uh, the most courageous thing I think that I was called to do was when I was on Wall Street at the famous firm Salomon Brothers during the heyday of its existence, during Liar's Poker when Michael Lewis was, was writing about the firm. I received a very large bonus, as did everyone at the end of the year, and I decided to tell people on the trading floor that I was giving most of that bonus to charity. And in fact, what it did is forced me to understand that my values were very different than the values of the firm, and there was not a cultural fit. So eventually I ended up leaving Wall Street and dedicating myself to other purposes. It's a difficult choice to make because on the one hand you have economic goals and satisfaction, on the other hand you have other values and there's some trade-offs between them. So if, if you make the decision that life is not just about economic satisfaction or material things, about having the most toys in life, and in fact you want something greater than that, then you have to have a, a different orientation. You have to think about the other, you have to think about the consequences of what you're doing, and in fact you end up thinking about people and probably about the planet as well. Okay. You are in the middle of writing a book at the moment now. Mm. Is this your latest, tell me about your latest courageous project. Yeah. So I've only written 14 books, so I need one more book. This is a book that I'm writing at uh, Tübingen University at the Welt Ethos Institute, the Global Eth uh, Ethics Institute. And the book is about the virtue of prudence. So the title is Prudent Business. And it has three different parts. The first part is about the theory of prudence and why it's important to rediscover because it's virtually left our vocabulary, particularly our business vocabulary. Uh, and, and we look at the different ways of thinking about prudence again so that we can resurrect the concept and the theory and the virtue of prudence. The second part of the argument has to do with companies that have embedded prudence in the way they actually perform. So some of them are Mittelstein companies in Germany. One of them is a large insurance company called Prudential Insurance, which it turns out is in fact rather imprudential. Uh, so it's a negative story. And then there's a story about uh, one of the oldest companies in the world, a Japanese company, a tea company that's 1,500 years old and how it sustains itself. So these very vivid, real examples from around the world. And then finally, at the end, we have tools which will make companies, if they use them, more prudent. Ethics audit, uh, governance audit, sustainability audit, virtue matrix, for a way to bring virtue into strategy decision making, and then finally an enterprise-wide risk management protocol. So ways to help companies really facilitate greater prudence. How do you define prudence? Well, we, uh, we define prudence uh, as the, uh, the, the, the way that you bring rational thinking, intelligence, in order to make deliberative decisions, so that you're not rash, you're not reckless, you actually have some kind of process. So in, in, in the recent context, in the financial crisis, we found that companies were over leveraged, that did all kinds of irrational things, they had all kinds of really uh, misfortunate behavior, and we're trying to take that back and provide really frankly a new theory of the firm for how you can be more prudent, more cautious, more conscious of all the risks that are inherent in the present system. Can you have prudence if you haven't first actually um, defined what your values are? No, I mean, prudence is one of the uh, so-called cardinal virtues. So you have to have it in conjunction with other virtues, but uh, Aristotle, Thomas Aquinas, Adam Smith, Kant, all of them had very, very, very well-developed notions of this virtue of prudence and how humans would have a deliberative action a way of thinking such that they could not only perform better, but perform ethically. And that has more or less evaporated over the course of the last century, century and a half. So we have to find a new way to bring that front and center. And the realities of today, I think, make that uh, rather incumbent. So I'm spending 15 hours a day virtually writing a book. I've done this before, but you have to put everything else to the side as a writer, academic writer and actually focus all of your attention, all of your courage to tell really powerful, readable stories. So the books that I've written most recently about the virtue of generosity, about the virtue of thrift, about companies that are doing virtuous business, 
all of them are meant to be very readable and to be disseminated widely, so-called trade books. And I'm trying to write that kind of book that will have a big impact.